Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to insert your swim elastic on your swimming suits. So I have the Amelia one piece swimming suit here by the Dibby Club. As you can see, I have my main swimsuit completely assembled. And then I also have my lining suit finished as well. I have gone ahead and put in some swim cups and some underbust elastic for support. This is all included with your instructions for the Amelia swimming suit. Now before we get started, let's talk about the things that you're going to need to get this done correctly. The first and most important thing to talk about is your choice of elastic. You don't want to use any kind of elastic. You want to use specifically swim elastic. This is a cotton rubber blend, and you'll notice it's really, really springy and stretchy. Other types of elastic do not have this much stretch or recovery to them. You are not going to be nearly as happy with the outcome if you use traditional garment elastic. Please take the time to find some good swim elastic. Before you cut it, I want you to make sure and give it a good stretch. This does make a difference. And then instead of getting a flat ruler and measuring it like this and cutting it, because when we do it this way, it's easy to accidentally stretch it when you're measuring or maybe even leave some slack. It's just really difficult to get an accurate measurement when you are measuring it that way. My preferred way of doing it is with a cloth tape measure. So I'm going to match up the top of my elastic here. And then with my thumb, I'm just going to lightly keep my swim elastic over top of it. I'm not pinching them together as I go down. I'm just lightly making sure that they are even as I'm going down my tape. Then I'm going to get to my needed length, which for me is 18 and a half, and then I'll go ahead and cut it right there. And that is really, um, in my opinion, the best way to get an accurate measurement for your elastic. Now we're going to prepare our elastic by sewing it together at the ends in a loop. For this particular pattern, we need to overlap the ends by a half of an inch. And I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch to go over it a couple of times. Now we have a loop for the elastic. Make sure that it didn't accidentally get twisted while you were creating that loop. It should be nice and flat the whole way around. So let's go ahead and mark the quarter points of our elastic. You can do this with a marker, or with pins, or whatever you want. So what we're going to do is start by pinning, for me, I'm gonna use the pins. Pin one side here, bring it across to the other side so that I know where the other half point would be. Then we're going to match these up. Now we've got quarter points. And this is just going to make it easier to put in the elastic evenly. Okay. Now we need to put the suit together. So we have our main swimming suit with the right side out and we have the lining swimming suit with the wrong side out. And we're going to nest the lining inside of the main suit. Now that the lining is inside, tucked away inside of our main suit, let's go ahead and get some elastic attached. For this tutorial, I'm gonna demonstrate it on the armhole here. So just like our elastic, we want to begin by marking it at the quarter points. 
Since I already have a few clips in here, I'm just going to use these blue clips to show you where my quarter points are. So I'm gonna actually swap out this blue one for a yellow one for the moment. So how we're going to do that is start by picking any point really and mark it. Then just like with the elastic, we're going to kind of match these up going down so that we can find the proper halfway point. It doesn't, it won't always be at the side seam. It might be depending on what pattern you're using. But for this one, I have a little bit more curve on one of my um, arm size, arm curves. So my halfway point is actually just past the side seam. It's down just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's about, oh, half of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Now we're going to do just like we did with the elastic. I have my two halfway points matched up and then I'm going to come out to the side here and I've got my first quarter point marked and same this direction and my second quarter point right here. So for this armhole, I've got it divided into four. So now we need to attach the elastic to the armhole at those quarter points before going any further. For this, I do like to use pins. I know that clips are really popular right now, but swim fabric is slippery enough to even slip through your pins at times, or your clips, forgive me. But the pins will stay put no matter what you do. So I'm just taking one of my quarter points and matching it up on the inside, okay? Not the outside, the elastic is going to be against the lining. I'm gonna remove my clip and use the pin that I have on my elastic and go ahead and pin that through all three layers. So it's catching my elastic, my swim lining, and my main fabric all the way through. So let me go ahead and do the other three quarter points. Now that I have it pinned at the quarter points, you can go ahead and stretch it and pin it at the eighths if you would prefer. This is gonna give you a bit more control as you're sewing so that your stretch of the elastic is being evenly distributed around the entire curve. Okay, now at this point, we are ready to sew our first stitches. What we want to do is sew right along this inside edge of the elastic. We're using a basting stitch. That's a long straight stitch without any back stitching. And you're going to follow right along this outside or inside edge of the elastic. This is going to make it really easy to remove these basting stitches later. And for another little tip, I really like to use some bright outlandish thread for this basting stitch so that it's super easy to spot it and have it stand out so that when you're pulling them out later, it's not really fussy to get out. So we're going to sew that basting stitch all the way around. Okay, so here is the inside of the swimsuit with the elastic. You'll notice our basting stitches are along that inside edge. Ne the next thing we're gonna do is take this edge and fold it over like this. Make sure that your elastic is being pushed all the way up to this corner. You don't wanna fold it in too far and you certainly don't wanna be folding your elastic in half. 
it should be nice and flat with the edge against this folded side here. And now that we have it folded, you'll notice that our basting stitches are on the outside edge. So at this point, we are going to pin all the way around so it's like this, and then we will be top stitching this edge down. First, let's get this pinned all the way around. And now with this folded over, we're going to go ahead and use a zigzag stitch or a cover stitch if you have one and top stitch the folded edge down. Two things I want you to pay close attention to. The first thing, and it's very, very important, is you wanna make sure that the bottom thread, wherever it is that you're stitching, is following right on the raw edge here. If you're sewing your zigzag stitch or cover stitch right here towards the inside, it's, or outside, it's going to be flipping out while you're wearing this. You really wanna make sure and catch the edge as much as possible. So resist getting too close to the folded side and do your best to keep it out here. Another tip is for you to be using stretch thread or woolly nylon. This is maxi lock stretch. I'm going to be demonstrating this on my sewing machine for you. So I have gone ahead and hand wound some of this maxi lock stretch thread on my bobbin. If you are using a cover stitch, you're gonna to wanna to use this in your looper thread. The really nice thing about using either woolly nylon or stretch thread is it is so much softer. Um, you don't realize until you make homemade suits how uncomfortable it can be to have the rough polyester thread rubbing against your thighs and your underarms. This nice soft stretch thread is going to be much more comfortable. And it does have a little bit of a practical value to it with it being stretch thread. It's obviously going to provide a little more stretch in that top stitching. So let's go ahead and take this all the way around with our top stitching. So this is what it looks like on the inside of the suit. You'll notice that we have our zigzag stitch following right along that edge there. It's keeping the elastic from peeking out. Everything looks so beautifully finished and clean. All that's left to do at this point is to pull out the basting stitches. And since we made sure to keep it on that inside edge when we first sewed it, it is now completely outside way far away from that stitching, that zigzag stitching. So it will be really easy to go ahead and pick and pull out and get out of the way. Then just look at this beautiful outside edge, this finished edge. If you use the cover stitch, then you're gonna have either two to three rows of the straight, straight stitching with the looper on the back side. But with the zigzag, it looks really nice too. So don't be afraid to try out swimwear if you only have your sewing machine Using this method for putting in the elastic is still going to give you this beautifully finished um, result at the end. And the nice thing about doing it this way is with those basting stitches removed, once we take those out, you're not going to have any bulk back here. If you attach the elastic with a zigzag the first time and then flip it and keep that zigzag in, you're gonna have 
quite a nest of thread back here. Doing it this way keeps it really clean on the inside, really smooth on the outside, reduces bulk, and just leaves you with a really nice, beautifully professional finish.